In this video, we will describe the surgical technique of a robotic-assisted hemi-nephrectomy for a horseshoe kidney, broken down into 11 steps. We will also briefly review the embryology and anatomy of a horseshoe kidney as it pertains to the surgical approach. Horseshoe kidney is the most common renal anomaly encountered, occurring in 1 out of 400,000 births. It is most commonly seen in males and is due to the direct contact of the developing metonephros, resulting in their fusion during ascent. The ascending kidney then becomes trapped under the inferior mesenteric artery, leading to a more abdominal location of the horseshoe kidney. Note that the adrenals are unaffected. There is also a failure of normal rotation of the kidney, resulting in an anterior and superior displacement of the renal hilum and pelvis. This may lead to kinking of the ureters. Accessory arteries and veins are frequently encountered, originating from the aorta, iliacs, or even the inferior mesenteric arteries. The constellation of anatomic aberrations highlighted here presents a unique challenge in the surgical management of these patients. Our patient is a 77-year-old female with a long history of recurrent urinary tract infections and nephrolithiasis who has undergone two percutaneous nephrolithotomy procedures. Workup revealed ureteral pelvic junction obstruction of the right hemikidney, which was previously managed with ureteral stenting. Unfortunately, she has failed conservative management of her obstruction, resulting in a non-functioning hydronephrotic right hemikidney which continues to contribute to recurrent urinary tract infections and intermittent pain. A CT urogram of the abdomen and pelvis demonstrates a horseshoe kidney with the isthmus clearly identified. The scan also demonstrates the anterior and superior displacement of the renal hilum, typical of a horseshoe kidney. There is delayed uptake and minimal excretion of IV contrast from the right hemikidney. The left hemikidney appears normal. After a discussion of all possible treatments, the decision was made to proceed with robotic-assisted heminephrectomy of the horseshoe kidney. The technique will be described in these 11 steps. The patient is placed in the left lateral decubitus position with the help of a beanbag. All pressure points are padded and the table is flexed slightly to open the abdominal space. The abdomen is insufflated with a varus needle. A 12 mm camera port is placed periumbilically. Two 8 mm robotic trocars are placed along the midclavicular line near the costal margin and the iliac spine. A third robotic trocar is placed laterally near the iliac crest. A 12 mm assistant port is placed at the midline, 5 cm caudal to the camera port. A 5 mm trocar is placed below the xiphoid process. Once all trocars have been placed, the robot is docked. Surgery begins by mobilizing and retracting the liver. The hepatorenal attachments are much less prominent than a traditional nephrectomy, owing to the more caudal position of the horseshoe kidney. A laparoscopic locking Davison Geck is then placed through the 5 mm port and used to retract the liver. The colon is then reflected medially by incising the white line of toll. Blunt and sharp dissection are used to separate Gerota's fascia from the mesocolon. The duodenum is then cocorized, exposing the inferior edge of the horseshoe kidney. A lower pull branch of the renal vein is identified and traced to the superiorly located renal hilum. Accessory vessels and lymphatics are ligated as needed. The abnormal position of the renal hilum can be truly appreciated as the main renal vein is encountered. The renal artery is then also identified and isolated. After placement of hemolock clips proximally and distally, the renal artery is ligated with a vascular endo-GIA stapling device. The main renal vein is then ligated in the same manner. The inferior vena cava is then traced down to the isthmus of the horseshoe kidney. The isthmus is then adequately exposed to facilitate ligation. Next, the isthmus is transected in a hemostatic fashion using the monopolar electrocautery. Attention is then turned to the ureter, which is identified and divided between clips. The kidney is then freed of all attachments superiorly, laterally, and inferiorly.
Now fully mobilized, the kidney is placed into an endocatch bag for removal prior to closure. The hyalur bed and isthmus are inspected to ensure hemostasis. A Jackson Pratt drain is then passed through the lateral robotic port. This concludes our presentation on the 11 steps of a robotic-assisted hemi of a horseshoe kidney.